morning. I'm going to talk a little bit about oh, our subject, the Federally Sponsored Sustainable Communities Regional Planning Grant Program and Sustainable Communities Initiatives supports locally-led collaborative efforts that bring together diverse interests from the many municipalities in the region to determine how best to target housing, economic and workforce development, and infrastructure investments to create more jobs and regional economic activity. Asheville County is one of the few communities in the country that falls into the planning area of two of the regions that have received sustainable communities planning grants, Northeast Ohio and Erie, Pennsylvania. Our speakers this morning represent these two groups and will provide an overview of their efforts to date, to date and goals moving forward in how they impact Asheville County. Our speakers this morning are Hunter Morrison, the Director of Northeast Ohio Sustainable Communities Consortium, and Jake Rao, uh, Vice President Economic Development in, of the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership, representing Destination Erie. And Jake is going to get us started this morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, you may be wondering why I'm here representing the Erie Regional Chamber, not our project manager or project coordinator. And the simple answer uh, to that is Brian gave me a ring, asked me to come over here and give an update on Destination Erie. And the one component uh, that Ashton Beulah is uh, intimately involved with in our plan is around economy and workforce. And that's the group that I'm chairing for uh, our regional initiative. Uh, there is a sheet on your table, um, a little packet that you should all see, and it gives you a, a, a Reader's Digest overview or summary of, of what Destination Area is, um, what we're looking to do. You can see the geographic scope of it. Uh, you can see uh, a number of other items there uh, on that document, including um, just kind of, it, it's really a guiding principles document, and then you'll see it. A number of the organizations that came together uh, to support our initiative um, and uh, the back sheet you'll see a number of uh, strategic directions and you'll see uh, kind of a philosophy behind which uh, we are operating moving forward um, so you know take a look at that there should be plenty of copies here for you if, you, if you'd like it, additional copies they're up front um, so so why uh, for, for Erie's destination, for destination area, our sustainable community initiative, uh, we cover five counties. And we covered uh, in Ohio, Ashtabula, in New York State, Chautauqua County, and in Pennsylvania, Erie, Crawford, and Warren. Why those five areas? That's really for the, the Erie metropolitan statistical area, that's our labor market area. Uh, we have people crossing the boundaries, coming from Erie County, going into Ohio and New York, and into those other counties, and vice versa those folks transferring, transporting every day from their counties into Erie County to go to work. Um, so from an economic region standpoint, uh, we're interconnected uh, very significantly. Our work um, to date has uh, reached out into all five of the counties and talked to business leaders there, uh, community leaders, uh, and spent a lot of time trying to uh, get a, a lay of the land of what's going on. There's been demographic analysis done on what's happening in your county and in the other counties, uh, what the strong industries are, uh, where the workforce is, uh, the community facilities that are in place, et cetera. Um, the other areas that our, our plan will cover uh, do not transfer into Asheville County. And those other areas are community facilities, which would be your educational institutions, uh, hospitals, uh, public safety, et cetera, uh, transportation, environment, housing and um, and so our area is focused solely on the economy and workforce but clearly it would transfer over into community facilities as well uh, and how we can better interconnect them uh, if you read the, the website for destination Erie and um, it's planned Erie region or I believe that's it uh, dot com uh, you'll get a lot of you'll get some philosophical there and they'll talk about the Nolan plan and the Rotoball plan. And in 1903, there was a plan done by a, a very well-known player named John Nolan. And then there was a plan in 1953 done by uh, uh, Rotoball. And they'll talk very glowingly. And you'll hear people who are around our project talk about them in these glowing terms about what wonderful things they did and how they drove the community. 
Um, in all candor, with the exception of one infrastructure project that Nolan identified in 1903, those plans had no impact whatsoever on the growth of our community. Um, it was driven by entrepreneurs, it was driven by political agendas, by individuals at the time. So uh, I have a master's in urban planning, uh, so I will just tell you that without hesitation. I'm very pro-planning, but in Erie, anyone who tells you that the communities were shaped by these two plans, by these grand planners, they're completely full of it. Um, that is absolutely not true. I've sat there and, now there's been a lot of other plans that have impacted the region, but they're on a smaller scale by less known firms on very specific focused areas. And uh, those plans have had a significant impact. But the grand master plan for the region, that has not been the case. The reason why we were so excited about the Sustainable Communities Initiative is the idea of interconnecting these, these component parts. The idea that what we're trying to do to plan for a region and, and build a stronger economy cannot ignore the fact that it's inextricably tied to our transportation network. And, and, and you know, a, high, a vibrant economy is absolutely tied into the housing, how you build housing, how you reuse housing and uh, the mix of housing that you have in the region. And also, uh, today more than ever, there's just such an emphasis on growing a good economy and growing jobs in the region is tied to your environment and how you're taking care of that environment, how you're utilizing it as an economic driver, as well as a quality of life factor to attract workers and people to the region. And so, we love the idea of taking uh, the opportunity to do something in a comprehensive uh, nature that can really shape the future of our region. But let me also tell you what uh, the, it's the most exciting piece of this, but it's e equally the most challenging piece of this. Um, here's, uh, and, and I'll get to that point in one second. When we reached out into the other counties, you would say from economy and enforcement, you're talking to business leaders there. What happens is after you, as you get further away from the center of any core, uh, the number of items that you have in common with each other start to dissipate. Uh, you, you have commonalities, but the commonalities are on very bigger on bigger issues versus that nasty house that everyone wants to see torn down and turn into a park. Uh, as you get to a bigger concentric circle, what you find is that the things that you have in common are much bigger issues. So what do we have in common? The region, the five county region, which is significantly different than, than the one Hunter's going to talk to you about. Our five county region has this in common. Got an incredible water resource, not just the lake, but the water treatment systems and distribution systems in our regions. Um, we have a challenge relative to the workforce, uh, finding skilled labor, um, uh, connecting people to jobs, uh, and family sustainable wages. Uh, we have an attitude issue. Um, there's, a, there's an inherent love of our regions, and there's an inherent pessimism and negativity that we all face. So while we're all about let's go charge that hill, uh, you can get into a lot of debate about which angle you're going to take to go get that hill. Um, we have an incredible agritourism uh, asset uh, throughout uh, all of the counties. And we have this issue of just, or this opportunity of uh, tremendous uh, recreational assets that we can bring people into our region in four seasons to take advantage of. And, and the last is, is that we do have, a, you know, on a smaller scale, a very nice diversified economy. We have healthcare institutions that are doing well. We have um, educational institutions. I think one of the things that is most unique is, is that there is a commitment throughout the five county region to manufacturing. Uh, there's a recognition that, in fact, we have a very strong manufacturing base, a very diverse manufacturing base, a very strong supply chain that could be an asset to a wide array of companies, and that the more we can partner together and strengthen that manufacturing base, the more we're going to be competitive going into the future. Um, so that's what we have in common. So what are, what are the challenges in a, in a destination area process? This isn't about, you know, if you really look at it, you're, you're setting a course um, for a point, or you're picking a point on the horizon for this plan that's, you know, looking out to 2030 or 2040 and saying, where, what do we want to be in 20 or 30 or 2040? We aren't wired to look that far out, especially in this you know, fast-paced economy with technology changing, you know, looking five years out in your business is kind of crazy because so much can change. Looking out 25 years for a community and saying, we're going to be there, 
we're not wired to think that way. We haven't been asked to think that way. And because of it, the ideas that are generated fall a little bit short. So um, we have to work on that. That's a, that's a huge challenge. But it's a tremendous opportunity. And I uh, will finish with this comment, and then we'll hit on the high points for everybody okay. here. And turn around. Um, why do we need that? There's a, there's a great book out there. And it's, called, it's written by uh, Jim Clifton. He's the CEO of the Gallup Corporation. It's called The Coming Jobs War. Simple read. I read it. I don't read books. I hate to say I read magazines, newspapers. Uh, I read this book, and it was very impressive. Because basically, it, it identifies the challenge that workforces face, that, that we face as a country, and how that's where we need to be focusing our effort. And one of the things, and I'm, I'm using here as an example. I don't know your community. I'm guessing this is true. But one of the things that the, their study has come up and shown us is that the thing around the globe that people desire most is a, is a job. One job, a single job that they can go to on a regular basis and contribute to. That that's what they desire across the globe, across countries, culture, etc. More than love, marriage, children, the thing that people value or desire the most is a job. Not five jobs to make a living, but in fact one job to go to on a regular basis. And he says something in the book that to me is very telling why I'm so passionate about destination here. He says that when kids are in high school and they can't see a point to go to after high school, he goes, they don't just drop out of school, they drop out of life. And so if you look at your community honestly and you say, what are we possibly showing them that gives them optimism for the future? Uh, if we're not showing them optimism or a, a, a pathway of where we're going and how we're going to get there, how do you expect them to be motivated to do the right things and to invest themselves in education? Destination Erie and, and the similar initiative for the Ohio region is about creating a picture of where the region's going and exciting people about it and unifying our, 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 our varied resources to get there. And so um, that's why it's important for people to participate because. Um, I want to have hope that my community's got a game plan to get someplace and not leave it to chance. And too much of our regional economic strategy has been, let's see where fate takes us. And that's, that's not a strategy. Uh, that's fool's goal. So um, here are the three major areas that we came up with. There's copies of this report on your table. And uh, you know, uh, I, I apologize, it's the bigger report. This is the draft of where our economy and workforce work group is, uh, is going. And what we found was is recognizing that, in fact, uh, individuals uh, have a hard time with this kind of vision thing. Uh, we, we, uh, we took input that we received in working with our sub-consultants on this particular section. We started developing ideas uh, to, to kind of prime and pump based upon everything that we heard and we worked with several subgroups. So, this is, I want to be very clear, this is the furthest thing from a finished document. This is what we see as, it is a starter document and designed to elicit reaction and dialogue and refine the ideas further. But, but we identified three primary challenges facing the region. Um, the first challenge is, is, that, um, the, uh, is that our companies aren't finding the skills they need among current job seekers. So that's the challenge that we identified throughout the region. And, and our, our vision is uh, to create an educational system that is more intentional in preparing people for careers by making curriculum more relevant and career counseling more plentiful. Now that sounds real basic, but it's not. Um, so much of our educational system is just about pumping people through a system and, and then they're done. Hey, we, we did it. We educated them. But did, you, did we educate them with the intention that they would be going into a career? How, how good are we doing a job about making sure that a sixth grader understands that they need to have a career, that they have to actually go to work, that that's part of being a member of society, not just passing the test, but at a young age, they need to be oriented that they're in a global economy and that they have to go to work. And that just doesn't happen. Changing that, that's a transformation in how we function as a regional uh, educational system. Uh, the second primary challenge is we wrote that is, is we identified as regional businesses are not fully prepared to compete in the global marketplace. And, and so we, our vision is that our region's prosperity depends on the ability of its existing and emerging companies to adapt and change to a market, change the marketplace and create a more entrepreneurial culture that prepares for disruptive forces, manages risk-taking, and celebrates success. 
Put simply, we have to stop betting on the same ponies that have been running the race for us in the region. Uh, they're going to go away, they're going to shrink. Erie's biggest employer is General Electric today at 10 o'clock this morning. There'll be an announcement that 500 people are going to be formally sent a more notice and be let go. This was prompted by about 950 jobs. I mean, this is, this is not something new to us. Um, but there's a tendency for people to bury their head in the sand and say, well, they haven't lost their jobs yet. Well, <coughs> they're losing them in the next 60 days. That's fact. That's going to continue to happen. And we got to be much more aggressive about not just letting that happen and assuming. Uh, hash rate in, in our region for new entrepreneurs is very low. Um, if you look at the most vibrant economies, they have a lot of companies being hatched and a number dying. But the point is that churn is where you get a lot of new ideas, new idea generation, and you get a lot more growth in the region. We have to elevate that overall. We also have to wake up our companies, and a lot of them have already done this. I'm very proud of the manufacturers, and I know they're, they're far more global than they were. They're far more diversified, and they're investing in technology to be competitive because technology uh, will help them succeed going forward. So we have taken a number of steps. We just can't sit back. We've got to consistently be uh, uh, focusing on innovation. And then the last piece, and again, when I say these, this is across the five county region. And the, the last challenge uh, is that regional leaders uh, do not have a shared understanding of their common interests. And so our vision is the five county region must function as a region in order to compete in the global economy for investment. Uh, we create that sense of, uh, of region and create the common set of assets and and threats, et cetera, that we all face. Um, shame on us, because we haven't crossed the border and talked, obviously, the Erie Inland Port Initiative, that, you know, that's, that's connected, you know, Kanye, Ashtabula, and Erie together uh, uh, through an agenda that everyone wins through that. But that's one agenda, and clearly there's multiple agendas that we can be crossing the lines, uh, and it's a really fictional, I mean, we all, I spent money in your economy over here just the other day at Madison Country Club. Um, my friends thankfully gave me back some of that money. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we do that all the time. And, and the, the boundaries, frankly, hamper commerce um, because um, there's less of a, you know, there's a tendency for us to kind of stay within our boundaries uh, for entertainment purposes. It's fascinating when you're in Erie, folks travel to Cleveland and folks travel to Pittsburgh for entertainment purposes, you know. Uh, they don't travel to Buffalo. I don't know. You know what I mean? When you talk to people, it's, but you know, think of your own travel patterns and how you do that. But we're in an interconnected economy, and um, and so we have to function that way. And we have leadership issues that, that cross the boundaries. I mean, your workforce is our workforce. Um, your supply chain is our supply chain, um, and uh, you know, your greatest assets ours, and that's the lake. And so, uh, and, and the, the tourists that come into your area and our area could go to both. So we just have to function more like that. And the only way that happens is if we become more intentional about it. We can't just hope that it happens. So that's the summary of where we are. Talk very candidly, uh, uh, I mean, uh, succinctly, we've got another year and a half to go in our process. So these ideas may look like they're fleshed out. They, they make me uncomfortable because they're far from fleshed out ideas, they're concepts to throw on the table to see what resonates with people and what, uh, they're starters. And so um, we encourage your participation throughout the process going forward and I'd be happy to tell you how you can become involved. So,
and, and, um, and others have played a very strong role in helping us to shape a vision for Northeast Ohio. Uh, I'm a little jealous of Jake because he's got five counties uh, to deal with uh, and really a core of like one. Uh, we have uh, um, a dozen counties uh, to deal with. Um, and the, the challenge that we have is we've got four metropolitan planning areas, uh, each of which has their own uh, framework and their own organization. This is the, this is the uh, um, geography of Northeast Ohio. It's about four million people. Uh, it's 12 counties. Uh, it's um, uh, the, the ge geography uh, and, and population of uh, uh, the state of Connecticut. Uh, and frankly, uh, it's, a, it's a challenge uh, to come forward with a plan, so we've defined this not as a plan, but as a framework. As a, as a regional visioning and, and decision-making framework for Northeast Ohio to create a more vibrant, resilient, and sustainable region. Ashtabula is part of the, north, of the um, Eastgate Council of Governments area, uh, and, and uh, is, a, is a very active uh, part of that organization, which really is centered uh, in, the, in the Mahoning Valley, with, the, with Trumbull and, and Mahoning County being part of the, the transportation zone. But it's also very much part of the, the coastal area uh, that starts uh, from Moraine, uh, actually for, further to the west, and goes all the way to, to the state border and, uh, and across. Uh, the, the framework also is one that, that, that looks to create tools that local governments, county governments can use. It's one of the challenges we face uh, uniformly across Northeast Ohio uh, is the thinning out of, of the capacity in each one of our communities. So uh, to, to actually implement uh, uh, plans that people uh, develop. So the, the tools uh, that we're developing include a dashboard helping us to look into the future uh, and measure progress towards the goals we're developing, a toolkit of best practices, policy recommendations uh, that uh, we can come together on, again, at a regional scale, uh, and pilot programs uh, providing and uh, highlighting the vision and the goals. And one of the things we've been able to do is identify uh, over 200 uh, good practices across Northeast Ohio we can all learn from. We're using a process called scenario planning. Our, the process we're dealing with is really grounded in the whole question of, 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 of our general net, of regional land use patterns and our transportation investments and the other investments we're making. Each one of those metropolitan planning organizations does a, does a plan, and, and right now are doing plans to 2035 and 2040. Jake said it's very hard for people to think that far out. But the reality is planners are working in each one, in, in Cleveland and Akron and Canton and Youngstown um, on how to invest several billion dollars um, across Northeast Ohio over the next 25 years. So what we're looking at is, is how, do we, how does that play out on the land? What, what are the impacts of our land use and resources choices? What are the major issues on the table? And what are some of the, the strategies we can, we can use both at the regional level and the metro level? and down at the, uh, at the local government level to align local actions and a regional vision. As we've gone across Northeast Ohio uh, over the last couple of years uh, and looked at where our economy is and what are the issues generally, there are five that, 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 that come forward uh, as, as overarching. One, I think we all agree that our economy needs to be stronger. <laughs> and Jake mentioned some of the workforce issues, uh, the business development issues, all of those questions. We're not directly engaged with those, uh, but we are looking really at how uh, our communities, from a physical development perspective, can become stronger places, more interconnected, more competitive places globally. Across Northeast Ohio, our cultural and natural resources are under stress, whether it's the Catholic Diocese closing churches, uh, parks um, being closed, uh, the water quality in, in, in some of our suburban treatment area uh, being compromised by development, uh, or the, the challenges that we, that we face in cleaning up the Mahoney River. Across Northeast Ohio, you hear a broad set of concerns about our, the cultural and natural resources that have historically made Northeast Ohio a very special place. As we've looked again, going back uh, to the 1970s, uh, when uh, the last sort of regional efforts were made to, to think about the future and, and project forward, our land use pattern do affect our local and uh, regional budgets. I'll get into that in a minute, but the, the reality is across Northeast Ohio, 
uh, we have grown our, our footprint, but not our population. In 1970, uh, we projected uh, the four planning agencies, projected collectively that the region would grow from about 4 million people to about 5 million people. We're in fact less than 4 million people today, but we've expanded our, our physical footprint by almost 25%. So we've really, we've grown the region for 5 million, there's only a million people missing. And those many people are missing for our good and obvious reasons. Uh, you know, the steel industry left the valley, the rubber industry left after, steel and steel left uh, another man, and, 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 and uh, a machine tool industry left Cleveland. Ashtabula has, has been affected as a port and as an industrial district. All of us have lost the industrial employment that in the 1970s was, was gangbusters. At the same time, across Northeast Ohio, in each one of our metros, we've expanded out. People have pursued their American dream further and further away from the core, and the funny thing happened, the empty cores are empty. And that's not just in, in, in Youngstown, it's all over Northeast Ohio. Um, the way in which we've we spent our, our, our funds suggests that we've got more infrastructure to maintain and fewer people to maintain it, and that creates a significant structural budget challenges for us going forward. What we also find is that, that uh, we, not, not, not un, unknown to those of us who work for most of our current in Northeast Ohio local government, we're a local government state. We're a home rule state. We have four, over 400 jurisdictions, cities, counties, and townships, each of which have, have some role to play in land use. And we've got another 300 jurisdictions that are taxing jurisdictions. There are about 700 jurisdictions in Northeast Ohio that are all going to the taxpayers in their respective communities with a value proposition to spend the, the, the money wisely. It's very difficult to get economies of scale, it's very difficult to get collaboration, it's very difficult to adjust to changes in our, in our economy and our population when we've got 700 boxes that need to be connected. And so one of the things we're looking at as a framework is maybe we can get on the same, same we might be able to get into the same uh, uh, hymn, but at least we might be on the same hymnal. We might be, might be able to look at the region through the same sort of lens about what are the challenges. But as we go across Northeast Ohio, the efforts to deal with, with some form of collaboration, consolidation, downsizing, all of these issues affect all of our governments. And it's only gotten more challenging in the last three, year, three or four years when the state of Ohio has pulled away from the local government fund, which has left a number of communities struggling to make ends meet. And finally, <clears throat> across Northeast Ohio, if you talk to anybody, whether it's a city engineer, county engineer, or metropolitan planning organization, uh, or water uh, system or sewer system, or rising infrastructure costs exceed our means today. And again, it's a, it's, a simple, it's a simple math. We have fewer people to maintain more stuff. In addition, there are new standards that keep coming down, whether it's combined sewer uh, outflows, uh, or requirements on road design, and upgrading for safety, that all fall on our local governments. So these are some of the challenges that we're facing. And again, the, the, the big challenge of, the, of this of Northeast Ohio, but it's also true of all of the communities in the Great Lakes states that, that, that were the industrial heartland of, of America, is that we are not growing. In fact, we're growing very, very modestly. We looked from 1990 to, to 2010 to see what the patterns are. We, we decided to, uh, to jointly not to go all the way back to the 70s because hopefully the, the, the great washout in, in the industry and the great loss of jobs and population is a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, that we don't want to repeat. But as we look at, at the 1990s to, to, to 2010, what we see is in, in the, in between 1990 and 2000, we grew both our economy and our, and our, and our population. Uh, and then with the Great Recession, we basically slid back down. So we're essentially where we are today. And so we projected out to say, okay, what happens if we continue at that very modest rate? Well, we get up to about 3.9, maybe 4 million people. We get a modest uptick in, in, job, in population and a modest uptick in jobs. What we're also seeing, and one of some of the bright spots in all of this, is that, that there has been a greater commitment uh, to, to conservancy and the park, act, park expansion, particularly around the Valley National Park, but conservancy in places like Geauga and Trumbull County in particular, Medina County, um, to put more land, to protect it, to protect our, our sensitive land uh, and our farmlands uh, from development. And that we see uh, continuing so that by the year 2040, we may have about 10% of our land area in conservation. Most of the experts suggest that 15% would be a better number. Now, it's very difficult to look into the future with any degree of certainty. 
And what we're, what we're developing are some tools to allow us to, to ask what if questions. What, what would happen if, we, if certain conditions obtained? What would happen if we, if we took certain actions? Mainly to guide our decisions. This is a process that frankly needs to be refreshed on a regular basis because uh, Jake said this is a fast-growing uh, uh, economy uh, and a fast-growing global a set of global challenges ahead. One of the things we're looking to do uh, is to have the tools that allow us to, to, to ask those kind of questions, not right now, not just now, but into the future as well. So we've, asked, we've looked at the future through four different lenses and said, okay, let's, let's see what happens if the existing trends continue. What will happen with our, with our land? What will happen with our economy? What will happen with our, with our infrastructure budgets? If we simply continue to grow physically further from the core cities, uh, and don't see much in the way of growth, uh, population, uh, or poor jobs. Um, and what happens, however, I mean, a lot of us don't believe that the, the dreary projections for the future uh, are ones that, that, that we want to live with. Uh, we all know the arguments that we have the water, they don't, they'll all come back from the, from the drug belt uh, to, to the water belt. Uh, and then when you're down in the valley and over in camp, people talk about the fracking industry. Uh, we talk about how we've got value propositions in Northeast Ohio that other places don't, and so we may grow. So we said, well, it's very hard to project again about 25 years. What if our economy were to stop subperforming the rest of the nation and we were to be competitive? If we were to grow up the national growth rate, well, we'd get about another half a million jobs. Pretty, pretty ambitious idea, but but a, but a plausible one. And uh, we've been working with Team Neo and the, the business community to understand what what plausible means in terms of a business model. Uh, but let's assume for the moment that we grow to the national growth rates. And let's assume for the moment that perhaps as the country grows by another 40 million people, uh, we get our fair share. We stop losing our market share of population, we stop losing congressmen, and we see if we keep pace. Well, we get about another 800,000 people. And what if we continue a pattern of developing new businesses, new commercial, new residential edges, of our, of our existing communities, uh, what, what sort of patterns do we get? Again, if we don't change the, path, the growth patterns, will we see new growth? And then a number of us have said, well, you know, maybe we should try to do some things differently. So we've arrayed a number of, 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 of approaches or interventions that look at the world through a different lens and say, and, and I think some of the some of the same things that Erie's looking at, we're looking at in terms of more compact development, making decisions to use the existing infrastructure we have rather than continuing to expand our footprint, uh, to uh, locating our making a much more aggressive effort on brownfields and looking locating jobs back on the industrial sites uh, that were the drivers of our economy for many many years. What if we do these things differently and have again modest growth? What what effects do we have on on uh, on our economy and our and our environment? competitiveness, and then what happens if we both do things differently and see population growth. So this is a way of sort of testing different different realities to see uh, what, what, what the options are. It's, it's, very, it's not a plan as much as it's a stress test. It's a way of seeing, okay, if we push this envelope side of that, that side of the envelope, where does it lead us? So let's look at what happens when, when we, we continue on the trend. Well, again, again, on the trend, we, we basically see um, a, a, a modest growth of, of about 90, a little less than 100,000 new residents, about 100,000 jobs, about 21,000 uh, 21, acres of, of, of land. It's a little hard to see on this drawing, and I'll show you uh, of a uh, cut into it, but basically most of the new development winds up at the edges of the urbanized Cleveland, urbanized Akron, Canton, the Mahoney Valley, uh, and out into Lake County. There's some additional Conservancy in, in the in the uh, in, in Ashtabula and Trumbull and, and, and Geauga County and Lorraine and Medina, um, and you'll see in a minute uh, significant impacts on abandonment. The bottom line is, if we continue to grow out and build new housing and don't see new population uh, or employment growth, we're, we're creating surplus housing and industrial and commercial space. It's a simple supply demand equation. It's what explains the abandonment of neighborhoods in Youngstown. And what, it's what explains the, the abandonment of the big box retail, like, like uh, Randall Mall in Cleveland. Uh, we have more things that we're building the new and not replacing and, uh, and having to replace or surplus the, the, the old. Now, the impacts of having the surplus uh, are, very, are very stark, uh, particularly on, the exist, on our existing uh, core communities. Cleveland, 
Lakeland in particular, uh, around the University Circle area, uh, between downtown and University Circle, the Mountain Valley, uh, Youngstown and Warren. Uh, we see begin to see some of the patterns in, in, uh, in, in Summit and Akron and Ken. Some modest abandonment in Ashtabula. But what we're seeing is that the old is being abandoned uh, to create the new. Again, this is, this is not new news for those of us who've lived and worked in Northeast Ohio, but it is, it, it is news to see the extent of it and the location of it. And we're, we're, we're able to project with reasonable certainty, this ground truth very well, where the weak points are in our communities. So the communities like Youngstown can take action if they want to. So the communities like Cleveland can focus their efforts on new construction on the areas that are weakened and compete perhaps for, for some of the new construction that's taking place in the region. And we can focus, this also includes our industrial development, and what we see is, is continued abandonment along the rail corridors of, of, of uh, historic industrial sites, walking away from the infrastructure that can access by rail to the rest of the world. Perhaps we should be focusing uh, our industrial workers on some of this. So this is really the first time where we've seen the geographic pattern and the extent and it's sobering for, for cities like Youngstown to realize they have 6,000 abandoned houses today. They're going to continue to be, they need to take down about 600 a year, year on year. Because the reality is that if we do not grow our population and employment and we continue to, to expand out, we'll have essentially modest uh, development uh, of, uh, of uh, new residential, about 92, uh, commercial and industrial, 92,000 acres, but about 77,000 acres of abandoned property. Uh, we do see, some, again, some, some growth uh, potential in the parks and conservancy. But this means about 175,000 houses to take down, about 18 housing units a day. Uh, day in and day out. It's about a billion and a half dollars and ten thousand dollars a cop to take all this stuff down. That's very expensive and it falls heavily as heaviest on, on communities like Youngstown, Warren, Cleveland, Lorraine, Illyria. Uh, not so much in Ashtabula, uh, simply because it's a, it, 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 it is, it's a smaller market, but it affects all of us. Now how does it affect all of us? Well, this scenario modeling includes fiscal impact. What we've done, this, this is a, a scenario modeling, it's an open source model that, that uh, has developed uh, uh, called Envision Tomorrow, which is linked to a fiscal model that's, that starts with county data uh, from the Federal Reserve, to which we've then augmented uh, the, the revenue expense statements of all of the 700 taxing jurisdictions in Northeast Ohio. So those of you who are local government have to file with the state. We put all that in, it's aggregated by county, so we look at the county of Ashtabula, not just the, the county government, but all the jurisdictions within it, all the jurisdictions within Lorain County. What do we see? What do we see is today, we're basically in balance between revenues and costs. And that's obvious because each one of our government entities needs to balance its budget. But we see some of our counties uh, in stress and some doing pretty well. If we project forward, we see we're about, as a region, we're about 20% worse off. Uh, and even the, the, the best performing county uh, today will be lower than the worst, uh, tomorrow will be lower than the worst performing county today. It's affecting all of us. Now, we know for a fact, as uh, those of us in local government, that we're not going to be in a 20% deficit, but it suggests that over the next 25 years, all of our communities are going to be faced with this unpleasant task of either raising revenues or cutting expenses because, again, we've got more uh, to maintain, or more uh, and we have to support the developing communities while maintaining the already developed communities. And that puts significant fiscal stress on our, on our region. So we ask the question, well, what happens again if we, if we, if we grow uh, um, uh, using the same um, uh, bad development patterns? We grow, so can we grow our way out of it? Well, what we see here again, if we go up about 800,000 uh, almost 900,000 people, about 500,000 jobs, uh, about the same amount of part-time conservation because the assumption is the land becomes more valuable. We do see development continuing at the edges. We see less abandonment at the core. Um, and and uh, uh, we have um, then asked the question, um, what are some of the things we can do differently? Uh, and what we can do differently is perhaps invest in, in, in our existing communities more deliberately and intentionally limit our development in environmentally sensitive areas, use our existing infrastructure, reuse it, uh, upgrade it as opposed to building new of the edges, uh, increase the proportion of mixed use and walkable development, 
expand our public transportation networks, particularly making better use of the networks we already have. About 8,000 acres of industrial and commercial land adjoining our best transit lines in Northeast Ohio. Standing empty, not picking up or dropping off anybody, either going to work or living. And prioritize new development in already developed communities. So we ask the question, what happens then if we try those methods? What if we do things differently? And again, using very modest development uh, uh, projections, uh, we see the abandonment disappearing. We see uh, the ability to do more conservation in this environmentally sensitive agricultural areas, particularly in southern Lorraine, southern Medina. Um, Wayne is in a pretty good shape. It's very, very uh, careful about preserving its ag land. That's where Smuckers are located. But the opportunities in this, in this quadrant for preserving our farmland uh, and our sensitive areas. Um, and then we ask the question, well, what if we do things differently? What if we accommodate that new population? And again, what we see is, in, in this particular scenario, much more of the development focused on the, on the core, uh, minimal development of the edge of staying basically within the existing boundaries of what's known as the urbanized and urbanizing area. Uh, but, but we don't extend that into the farmland on the road, uh, our, our prime uh, agricultural uh, assets in all these Ohio. So again, what we did at the workshops a couple of weeks ago, uh, in, in right out here at the at Penn State Ashley Bill Life, is ask people about you know what are the scenarios, what are the what are the choices. And I don't want to get uh, first of all, all of this is available to you on the web. Uh, uh, if you go to the Mike McNeil uh, website. But what we see again uh, in, in, is um, again modest the the the, the modest scenario uh, yielding about uh, 276 new housing units, uh, 276,000 new housing units, 175,000 uh, abandoned units. If we grow the same, uh, we see again more housing, new construction, but a much reduced uh, abandonment. If we do things differently, we see again fairly modest construction, um, more aggressive. Uh, uh, we, we see more aggressive abandonment here. And if we grow and uh, and focus our efforts in the core of our existing communities on our existing infrastructure, uh, we can again see significant new development, but uh, relatively little abandonment. We looked at, at the impacts across uh, a, couple, a number of different factors, such as the amount of prime farmland lost, and there's some fairly significant differences in the scenarios about the prime farmland. Uh, there's a fairly significant different, very significant differences as well in the in what we call the ecologically valuable land. We create uh, significant differences in impervious surface, uh, which affects uh, water quality. Uh, not, not terribly significant uh, changes in our vehicle miles traveled, but more people living their transit, working their transit. Um, and again, the cost of revenue ratios uh, change from about a 33% deficit to, to a 13% to a positive across the region. These again are suggestive of some of some of the consequences of, of doing things the same way, doing things differently, meant to frame up discussions about <coughs> what, we, what we can do together. A couple of conclusions is we can't that we really can't just grow our way out of it. Uh, the challenges that we face will become worse if we simply try to grow our way out of it. Um, we need doing good things differently have, have, have significant benefits. Uh, if we grow differently, uh, some of the benefits uh, are, are, are uh, um, amplified. So again, the broad framework saying that there's, there's a, there, there, there may be some uh, significant benefits to all of our communities if we, if we uh, work together to do things differently. So we look, took a look at what the results are from, from uh, the, the uh, first round of, of, of meetings. And again, this is a, a vast oversimplification of an awful lot of data that's come out of this, but in the interest of time, uh, I'll just cover some of the highlights. All of the findings are posted on our webpage, uh, and we're going to be coming back out in, uh, in October to talk about those. What we find, we, we had uh, uh, meetings across Northeast Ohio um, in various locations in Cleveland and Greater Cleveland and Ashtabula, uh, in, the, in the Valley, in Youngstown, and Warren, and in Canton. And what we found, we asked broad questions about what, what, uh, what, uh, whether the scenarios match your vision. Uh, not, not surprisingly, Ashtabula uh, is, is a little bit more conservative than the rest of the region. Uh, young Akron is an outlier. What happens if we grow the same? Um, I think, again, Willowick and Lake County, a, a stronger interest among the participants of that meeting uh, in, 
in the way things are, 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 are proceeding. Um, as we go again, uh, a little bit more conservative than the rest of the region. We see a big jump when we, when we ask about, when we ask the participants about doing things differently. Uh, and it suggests to us that, that at least among the folks that attended uh, and participated and, um, and uh, voiced their opinion, uh, there's an interest in looking at things, at doing things differently, and that's an area we need to be exploring. Uh, but interesting enough, the folks that came to the Ashton Bureau meeting uh, saw the doing things differently as, as a real positive. Uh, we saw the same in Akron and in Youngstown. So it suggests that there, that, 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 that there is a, a, an attitude for exploration further. And then to growing differently, uh, on Moraine, uh, there was a, again, um, in Wright County, which has had some significant new development in the past decade out of Cuyahoga, uh, interest in, in uh, perhaps uh, growing differently, growing but doing it differently, more conservative in camp. So what we're seeing is some, some broad alignments, but some very real outliers uh, as, we, as we go across the region. One of the goals of this framework is to be able to come back to our metropolitan planning organizations and our cities and our counties with information that allows them, the decision makers there, the community leaders in, the, in each one of the communities to make better, more informed decisions and perhaps tee up the types of, of really detailed discussions that need to take place in rooms like this and tables like this. But, okay, if this is where we're headed, is this where we want to head? What are our choices here at Ashley Bay? What are our choices at Ashley Bay? What are our choices in these two areas? And what are our choices for these two lives? What works for us? What doesn't work for us? But setting the table with some common information about, about the, the, the challenges and the assets. And so again, um, the, these are the types of, of uh, interventions that um, um, People have come forward and, and said we should be exploring, and we'll be back in October to talk about those and see where people um, um, wind up, uh, feeling what's, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, what's for us and what's not for us, so we can report back accurately and fairly about people's opinions. One of the te techniques we've used, and among others, um, is, is a, uh, an online game called Imagine My Neo. And thanks to uh, the, the Peggy Carlo and the other folks in, in Ashtabula and East Gate area, uh, which set, got the word out. Uh, Ashtabula <coughs> County uh, was a significant uh, contributor to the regional dialogue on this. Uh, without again getting into too much detail, this was an online tool which is still available uh, to, to, uh, to play, which asks you to go in and play planet. To look at what your values are, what your expectations, what your hopes are, what your budget is. And to make some choices about policy, about what sort of policies you support, what sort of policies you don't, and it's wide ranging from, from we ought to put more development restrictions on uh, and focus on, on urban development to we want lower taxes and fewer regulations. So we try to cover a broad view. Uh, and across the region, uh, the, the top priorities are clean air and water, good jobs, uh, recreational activities, and infrastructure. Those are the top four. Um, and, and arts, culture, and sports coming in uh, all um, sort of the most significant uh, uh, um, aspects. And one of the things that was very striking, uh, and this was also borne out in a, in a, a telephone and internet poll uh, that we did uh, simultaneously, uh, is the importance that Northeast Ohioans place on clean air, land, and water. That's across the board with the exception of Stark County, where jobs top to the, the, the environmental issues. But this, again, as we frame the argument for restoring the Mahoning River, cleaning up Lake Erie, dealing with the, with the pollution on the Ash, um, in, in Ashtabula, uh, on brownfields, and, 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 and along the rivers, uh, this is one of the things that resonates across the region that I think we can use as we go to Columbus and, 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 and uh, Washington to argue for the funds we need. In Ashtabula, again, about 88 people participated, uh, which proportion was very high, and um, frankly, Ashtabula, the folks in Ashtabula have played a, a, a you, 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 you participated above your weight class, uh, and I really appreciate that because there's been proportionally a significant uh, voice from Ashtabula in this. But we looked at the questions, of, uh, we pulled out the Ashtabula numbers and said, well, look, it's, it's about, again, about clean air, land, and water. It's about good jobs and sharing the region's financial success. And the number three is infrastructure and preserving the open space and recreational opportunities. So the top three are ones that align with, with the areas that we've been looking at, uh, about the need to maintain and, 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 uh, and support.
transport or infrastructure, the need to focus on jobs uh, and the need to, to keep a clean, uh, have a clean environment. I think that the, the connection that Jake mentioned earlier about a quality of place is an economic development tool these days. I guess when you and I both started, it was the cherry on the Sunday. You know, we're gonna forget, forget the environment, we're gonna have jobs. Today it's the ice cream. Today people don't go to places they don't want to be in because they have a lot of other choices. So how we how we present ourselves, not as, as we saw that in Youngstown, we saw it in Brady Green, to change the dialogue from being an old beat up mill town to being uh, the Green Valley, because that's really the way way for the future. I think people broadly understand that and viscerally want this region to be all it can be in terms of this national environment. That's one of the things that sets us apart. So I hope I haven't gone on too long, but I really wanted to bring you up to date on this and would urge you to go on our Vibrant Deal webpage uh, and go into the site to understand all the data and information. Among the other things we've been doing is, 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 is inventorying all the assets, things that we can build on in each one of our communities, including Nashville, uh, looking at the pilots, things that are being done uh, in our communities uh, that we can learn from each other. Uh, but uh, on October 16th, we'll be out again in this, in this space. Uh, from a, for a program starting at 6 uh, 30, registration at 6, to talk about these findings in greater detail, to do some, some, some table work, to do some polling, to see where we're, where we're headed. So, frankly, Peggy, we can bring back to Ashtonville County, we can bring to the Eastgate Board, we can bring to our board. Uh, what are the results? What are people saying? And what are the directions? As, you know, as, as groups like Eastgate look to the, to the next 25 years and making transportation investments, uh, as we lobby together with the state of Ohio, I think other than that bring us together, other than just the turnpike, um, what are the things that bring us that, 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 that we have a common interest in? What can we work together? Because again, uh, to finish with the words of Winston Churchill uh, at the end of the Battle of Britain, uh, this is not the beginning of the end, but merely the end of the beginning. But this effort uh, that we're making across an unprecedented effort across 12 counties, across a region of four million people is in many ways the first time we've tried this ever. Uh, and it's, a, it's the largest uh, such program in the country. Uh, and it's an opportunity, we think, uh, to frame up some common understanding, a common a mental map uh, of the challenges we face going forward. So thank you again for your time, and thank you for your participation, those of you who have been able to participate in our